In this video, learn how to trade crypto on KuCoin. I'll show you how to navigate the KuCoin trading screen to get the best setup and trade like pros with limit orders and stop loss orders. We'll also have a look at some of the great features KuCoin has for trading cryptocurrency. Hey guys, James here. KuCoin has great altcoin support. So if you can't find an altcoin on Binance, which is quite rare, you might find it here. And KuCoin has some other great features like trading bots and good crypto passive income offering products as well. If you don't have KuCoin yet, I'll leave the link to sign up in the description. You don't need KYC information like ID cards to trade on KuCoin. You can set it up pretty quick. Coming into the KuCoin account then, you'll see that there's actually a few different types of accounts in KuCoin. Depending on what area of the site you're using, you'll have to transfer some funds into those. So if you want to trade on margin, there's a separate margin account. If you want to go ahead and stake, then you might want to go to the Pool X account, which is a staking account. I have some of my assets in the main account right now because I'm actually lending them out. We have to go to the trading account. So if you want to go ahead and buy some cryptocurrencies, you will have to put some funds in your trading account. I'm just going to search for US dollar tether here. KuCoin, as of making this video anyway, doesn't allow fiat to cryptocurrency purchases unless you go up to the buy crypto and you go ahead and buy with card. The other method is to go and buy some cryptocurrencies with a fiat currency like US dollars with another trading service like Coinbase or Binance. You can then transfer your cryptos into KuCoin to go ahead and trade. We're going to get right into the trading screen though, so we'll come up to trade and we're going to be looking at the spot market today. I'm not going to go over margin trading. Spot market basically means the cash market. So that means we actually have cash on account and we're going to go ahead and trade with that. Before we get to the trading screen overview, I want to come down and show you this right here, which is a trading pin. You're going to have to set this up before you start trading on KuCoin. So what you have to do is come over to the options menu and then come down to account security. When you're in account security, you'll see a few different options. It's going to ask you to set a few things up, but you'll want to come down here to trading password. Now I've got mine set up already, but you can just click the option to get that set up, put in the trading password, and then you can go ahead and trade. We're going to come back to the trading screen then and we'll go through all of the different features and all of the different information that you get in the trading screen with KuCoin. Firstly, up at the top, you have a few different options. A really great thing is that you can actually see how quick your connection is, which I think is pretty important, especially if you're day trading. We also have an option to change it into day mode. I'm definitely not about that, so I'm going to go back into the night mode. You can set up market alerts here, so if you click on this one, you can go through and add an alert. And what that will do is let you choose a pair and then let you choose a price that the pair is trading at and then it will send you alert. So if I want to alert maybe at uh, 52,000, if Bitcoin reaches 52 against the US dollar tether, then I can go ahead and confirm that and it will alert me on the system. Also something pretty important is to come down and make sure that this little icon is ticked. This says KCS pays fees. As you can see, if you have some KCS on account, you get a 20% discount on your trading fees. So I definitely recommend getting that discount. You do have to have some KCS on account though. So you would have to go ahead and buy some KCS and leave them on your account to pay those fees. Up in the top left, it shows you the currency pair that you're trading at the moment. So we've got the Bitcoin US dollar tether currency pair. And then this is the chart for this pair. On the right hand side, some information, not massively relevant, but it just tells you the 24 hour low and high of the currency pair and also how much volume has gone through in that currency pair. Not really that important here for the big currencies, but if you're trading a very small altcoin, it may be good to see just how volatile it is and how much trade is actually in that crypto. Another good option in KuCoin is to see four charts at once. So if you click this icon, instead of having one chart, we'll click on four. And right now you can see I've got Bitcoin and I've also got the Ethereum market here. So this is Ethereum. You can just click on one of the squares to highlight it, then come up and choose a different currency pair that you want to have a look at. So I'll just look at KCS against Bitcoin. For example, you can see it comes up right here. You can do the same right here. So it just gives you an overview of four different charts rather than looking at one. You can edit these up in the top so you can see these tabs right here so I can actually just click on one tab and then it highlights this. When you highlight it you can see the order book and the recent trades screen do change because this is obviously the order book for Bitcoin. If I now change that to Ethereum you'll see the order book changes we're now in the Ethereum order book. We can go ahead and just change it back to the one screen like this. It does keep with Ethereum so if you want a bigger version of the chart just switch between them here and you can go back to that chart. 
Let's come to the chart then before we get into the order book and putting some orders in on the system. So as you can see right now, we've got the Bitcoin chart against US dollar tether and we've got a candlestick right here. You can change this. You can come up to this icon right here and change. So I'm on a candlestick right now. If you want bars, maybe you can change it to that. So I'll just zoom in. You can see we've changed it to bars instead of the candlestick. I like trading with candlesticks. You can choose whatever you want. I'm going to change it back to candlestick for now. Now what you'll see is KuCoin gives us something called TradingView. TradingView is a, a paid charting system but luckily with KuCoin we get it for free which I think is a nice touch. You also get this for free with a lot of other crypto trading services so it's nice to have that here when we're trading. What we can do though is change some of the analytics on the chart so we'll scroll over here and we can change the time scale on the chart very easily. So at the moment we're looking at 30 minutes. What does that mean? It means that every candlestick is 30 minutes in time. So I'm now going to change it to one hour and you'll see the candlesticks change. They change because they're now covering a bigger amount of time or a longer amount of time, one hour instead of 30 minutes. So as we zoom into the candlesticks, each one of these candlesticks is now representing a 30 minute period of time. And you can change this to anything that you want very easily up here. You can see you can actually favor a number of time frames. A lot of them are favorited right now for us. I'm happy with the one hour, so we'll keep it there for now. If you want to know way more about candlestick charts and trading on charts and a lot of technical analysis, I've got other videos for that. So for this one, I'm just going to show you how to get up and running on KuCoin. What we see in the top left hand corner is something called MA. This is moving average. And these are basically lines on the chart that give us a moving average of the prices. You can see there's options here. There's a 10, a 5 and a 30. So it's a 10 day moving average, 5 day and a 30 day moving average. What we can do is come up here and change one of these. So you can actually turn them all off and you'll see those lines disappear on the chart or you can turn them all on. We'll just keep 30 days on. You can see it's this very faint purple line. Let's go and change that. So we'll come over to format right here and then you can change the length of the moving average. Now this is what you can do with all indicators on the chart. So if you put an indicator on the chart, you can come over here, go to input some format and then you can change a lot of the details of it if you want. We're going to keep the 30 day moving average though. We're going to come over to the style, just make the line a bit thicker. We're also going to make it a hard cutted line and then we're going to come down and press OK. And you can see it's a lot easier to see now. A lot of traders use moving averages as a very simple way of seeing how the current chart is compared to prices in the past. Also, a lot of traders use the 200 day moving average. So I'm actually going to go format. I'm going to inputs. And I'm going to change that to 200 like this. Now, this is a 200 period moving average. So over the last 201 hour periods, how has the chart performed now versus how it has in the past? And what you can see is that the chart now is actually underneath the 200 period moving average. A lot of traders will not go long unless the chart right now and the price right now is above the 200 period moving average. Some people also see a crossover of the 200 period moving average as a potential to go short. Like I said, I've got way more detailed trading guides and videos. I'll link them below and you can go on the playlist. But for now, I want to show you how to add more tools onto the chart. We're going to come up to this. We're going to come up to this chart icon right here. And now we can go and search for a bunch of indicators. KuCoin has really good support for indicators. So I'm just going to very quickly show you putting RSI on there. So I typed in RSI. I'm just going to click Connor's RSI right here and then click off and you'll see that come at the bottom. I'm just going to go ahead and change these colors once more as we can't really see it. So just make the lines bigger. You can change all of these options just to make them a little bit easier to see. I can take this background away altogether and then just make this a solid line. Press OK. Then we can see that a little bit clearer. So we're going to zoom in. Now with the RSI, there are different versions of it. But essentially when the RSI is down at a low point, you can see this white line here around uh, 30 on this chart. That is usually considered oversold and so that may be an area where you could go long. And then when the RSI actually comes up to the top end of the chart around 60, 70, that would tell us that the chart is overbought and so maybe not a great time to get in. That's a very rudimentary understanding of the RSI. It's way more complex than that. And in reality, you need to use the RSI with many other indicators. Like I said, I've got other videos going through that, but you can see that KuCoin does have a very good set of charting features that you can add and edit. We can definitely go ahead and draw on the chart as well. So we can come over to the left hand side. We can add some text by clicking the T right here or the paintbrush just lets us draw some things on the chart. So we're going to draw an area like this and then you can draw another one here. So you can see there's lots of things you can do and you can definitely play around with it. If you want to draw trend lines, then this will just draw a very good trend line for you. So we can just use this as a trend line, connect those two dots. We can make the line a bit bigger by pressing this one and just making it big. And then you can have a lot of different tools that you can go through and search for yourself. 
Now we're gonna to come to the order book and putting in some orders. So as we can see on the right hand side, we have bids and offers on the system. So right now we are looking at the Bitcoin chart against US dollar tether. So right now Bitcoin is valued at 49,559 US dollars. So to go ahead and buy one Bitcoin, that is what it would cost you. On the upper side of the order book, these are in red and these are sellers. So these are people in the market that are trying to sell Bitcoin and they're trying to sell Bitcoin at a higher price than the mid price. This price right here is the mid price. And then underneath we have people trying to buy Bitcoin and above people trying to sell Bitcoin. All of these orders are cheaper than the mid price. So you'll see here and it's jumping around, but let's take 59, 6, 12. All of these have to be underneath that and they'll just go down in descending order. And then conversely, sellers will be above the mid price and these will be going up and getting more expensive. Now, obviously, these people that are trying to buy Bitcoin at 49.6 and these people trying to sell at 49.7, their orders are just too far away from each other and they're not going to match. But people that do want to trade are going to be trading at this price in the middle right here. We also know this because we can look on the right hand side and we can look at recent trades. These are actually trades that are going through. So this is buyers and sellers matching up and trading at a specific price. This is also really good information for traders just to see. I mean, you can see it's all red right now. So that just gives me a really good amount of information that yeah, people are coming in and selling. Now it's all green. So you can see it's just moving between them. There's actually a lot of trade going on right now. So all this is is just trades going through up here. And then here is sellers and here are buyers. And when they do match, this is the price that they will be matched and traded at. Now we can come down to the trade screen right here. So I'm just going to put in my pin and that will open up the trading system for me. And I'm just going to show you spot trading right now. Like I said, this is cash trading. So if you've got some cryptos on account, including US dollar tether, we can go ahead and trade them. On the left hand side, you'll see a box and this is where all your orders will be. So if you have any open orders, they'll be here. If you have any stop orders, they'll be in here and I'll go through what they are in a second. Your order history. So if you've traded anything recently and it hasn't gone through or it's still working, or maybe you put an order in and then canceled it, that will be on your order history. Trade history. These are trades that have gone through and have actually matched with another market participant. So if you've traded anything, that will be in your trade history. You can also change between spot and margin accounts. Like I said, we're going to click on spot. So right now we can actually go and put some orders in. So firstly, I'm going to come over to market order. So what is a market order? Well, a market order you can see here is the best market price. We don't actually choose the price that we're going to trade at. So as you can see, a lot of these people are actually putting in orders at different prices. But if you go ahead and trade a market order, you're not going to be doing this. What you're going to be doing is basically just trying to trade at the mid price. And you can't actually determine what price you trade at because as you can see, this thing is moving around all the time. It's changing from 49.5 to 49.6 and going different ways. When you put in a market order, you have absolutely no choice whatsoever what price that you trade at, but you do have a choice of how much you actually trade with. So let's just put uh, 500 US dollars tether right in here. So what we know if we are a buyer is that we're going to be buying 500 USDT worth of Bitcoin. We don't know how many Bitcoin we're actually going to get because we can't actually know the price before we trade because it's moving around. We can come down to the bottom and choose an amount. So if you have a certain amount on account, you can just choose 50% of what you have or 75% and that will enter it in there for you. What we can do is just press buy straight away. And if you have Bitcoin to sell, it's the complete opposite for selling. You can come and do it here. What this is going to do is trade immediately for us. 500 is not a lot of money. People are trading tens of thousands of dollars worth right here. So it's not going to move the market. We'll trade straight away. And actually what that will do is come in your trade history straight away. It won't be an open order because we don't need to work the order. It will just come into our trade history. We'll trade immediately. There's a few downsides of market orders. Firstly, you can't choose the price and that is kind of a downside because you might get a bad deal depending on when you press the button. But the upside of a market order is that it trades extremely quickly for you. And in fast moving markets, you might just want to get a trade done. And so you're going to have to go with a market order. Limit orders are really common as well. So we're just going to click limit order right here. And what you'll see immediately is that you get the option to choose the price that you trade at. You can actually come up to the order book and click an order and it will change the amount here. So I'm just going to click down here. You'll see that the price of US dollar tether changes. So I'm going to press it again. You'll see it changes. Press it again. You see it changes a little bit. So it's good to maybe just click an order here and then you'll know you're in or around the proper price that people are trading at. But what you can do is choose your own price. So as we know, Bitcoin is trading at around 49,000. 500 US dollar tether right now. So what I can go ahead and do is put in a limit order 
and I want to buy some cheap Bitcoin, so I'm going to try 45,000 like this. That is going to be my bid for the Bitcoin. And how many Bitcoin do you want to buy? I'm just going to buy half a Bitcoin right here. So you can put in the amount you're willing to pay and the amount that you want to buy. So we're using US dollar tether to go ahead and buy Bitcoin. We're happy to pay 45,000 for half a Bitcoin. Now, remember that when you value assets, you always value them in a whole coin. So even though we're putting 45,000, what we're saying is we're happy to pay 45,000 per Bitcoin, but we're only willing to buy half a Bitcoin. So this is obviously going to be 22 and a half thousand if we actually go ahead and trade. Now, when I come down and actually press buy BTC, what's going to happen is that it's going to go over into my open orders. The reason why it's in open orders is because we can't trade right now. You can see that the market for Bitcoin right now is actually at 49 and our price is 45. So we can't trade. We're too cheap. But what will happen is that the system will work it for us and it will put in our limit order. And if the price does get down to 45, we will then trade. We don't have to do anything else. Our order will be in there working for us all the time until or if the price actually gets to our level. If you want to put a limit order and let's say I put in my limit order here at 55,000, then I'm actually going to trade straight away. It's basically going to be a market order because the market price is 49 and I'm telling the system that I'm willing to pay anything up to 55. So doing this would be essentially like putting a market order in there. OK, so we have market orders and limit orders. There's also a third option. You can see stop limit here. So I'm going to click on stop limit. You can see there's now three options that we have. Stop limits are a little bit different to limit orders. Like I just said, if you put a limit order in and it's actually at a price above the current market price, it acts as a market order because you're telling the system you're happy to pay way more than the price actually is. With a stop limit order, that's not the case. We can actually put the stop price in here. So I'm going to put 55,000. And then I also have to put a price in because I'm actually entering a limit order. So I'm going to put, let's say, 55,000 like this. It's exactly the same as the stop price. Well, what am I actually telling the system right now? I'm telling the system that if the price of Bitcoin against USDT reaches 55,000, I want you to enter a limit order for me. And the price I want for that limit order is 55,000. This is different to a limit order because with a limit order, I'm telling the system, just go ahead and trade straight away for me. If the price is under my limit, you can go ahead and trade at a better price. But with a stop limit order, I'm saying that only if the price reaches 55 will you then input a limit order for me at 55. Why would anyone do this and put in a stop limit like that? A lot of people want to do this. Maybe they're trading breakouts and they want to put in an order when it gets above the 200 day moving average. So some traders may say if the price gets up around the 200 day moving average once more, I think it's going to break out further to the upside. I don't want to go in now, but if it does cross the 200 day, then I can put an order in. So that's what they can do and they can automate that and actually do it ahead of time and really put lots of orders in. So they don't want to trade right now, but if the price gets to a certain level, then they can go ahead and trade. This also works with stop market order. So we know what a market order is now. I can actually change this to a stop market order and that's a really great option. So what you can do is say, look, if the price gets to 55,000, then you can go ahead and enter an order for me at the best market price. So you have no limit prices here. What you're telling the system is if it gets up to 55,000, I want you to put in a market order for me and just buy $5,000 worth of Bitcoin for me. Again, this is just another option for traders and they will use them depending on what type of strategy that they're using. Now, these all work exactly the opposite when it comes to selling as well. So it's exactly the same and you can use them as stop loss orders. So let's say we have a holding of Bitcoin at 50,000 and we're actually in a losing trade right now. It's coming down and I don't want to lose too much money. Let's say if the price reaches 49,000, I actually want to sell my position. I want to take my loss and just stop further losses because I just want to get out of the trade. Well, we can do that, but we can't do it with a limit order, of course, because if we put in a sell order at, say, 49,000 or 48,000, the price being above that, that limit order would go through straight away. And we don't actually want to do that because we want a bit of breathing room in our trade. So what we can do is actually put in a stop limit or a stop market order and say, look, if the price does get too low around 49 or 48, then you can go ahead and basically trade out of my Bitcoin. Let's say we bought half a Bitcoin. If the price gets down to 48, just cut my losses, take me out, and then that will be done for you. So that's why you'd use a stop market instead of a limit order. It really lets you choose the price. And then when the price hits that level, then it will go ahead and enter that order for you.
If you haven't got a KuCoin trading account yet, click the link in the description to go through and sign up in a few minutes. Also check out the trading playlist on my channel if you want some more help with some crypto trading strategies. Subscribe for daily helpful crypto content and I'll see you in the next one.